In this video, we're going over 10 encounters that can happen in a forest, which you can probably add to your game if you're a DM as some kind of random encounter. Starting off at number 10, we have the lost child scenario. The setup, you're walking through a foresty area and you come across a lost weeping child. Based on how you handle the situation, you might be able to bring the child home, where the parents will be nice enough to reward them with a couple of potions of healing. This is an encounter which shouldn't really require any kind of combat, but could require the players to perform a whole bunch of skill checks and actually make use of their various different abilities. Like a persuasion check in order to calm the child down, a survival check in order to backtrack through the forest to find their way home if they're lost, and maybe a stealth check to sneakily navigate the forest without drawing attention to yourself, so that you don't have to protect the child during a random encounter fight. And at number 9, we have the sleeping animal scenario. The setup, you're walking through a forest and you come to a clear pool of water, where you notice various different animals sleeping next to its edge. This is all you describe to your players, as it's up to them if they want to figure out what happened and what to do next. Some parties may just ignore the pool, but the more curious players might try to determine how the animals fell asleep. The reason the animals have fallen asleep can be anything the DM wants. Maybe the pool water is poison and knocks out whoever drinks it, or worse, kills them. Maybe there's a gas in the area, but it only goes up to the party's shins, and is invisible so it goes undetected until you lean down to that level to maybe drink some water from the pool. Maybe there's nothing mysterious happening, and the animals just simply fell asleep for no reason at all. Trying to determine what happens is part of the mystery of the scenario, and you could even just let your characters guess whatever they want and just kind of roll with it if you don't want to think of a specific reason it happened to yourself. And at number 8, we have the creepy laughter in the distance. The setup for this one is simple. If the characters are traveling through the forest, they hear the sound of laughter as an echo in the distance. Maybe it's the laughter of children, laughter of the hag, whatever you describe the laughter as, it doesn't really matter because it's just there in order to trip them up. There is no actual cause for it. The forest just happens to be slightly haunted with harmless spirits that like to mess with travelers. Or you can add some kind of encounter if you wanted, but the point of this one is just to create a sense of unease and a little bit of tension to keep the players on guard as they explore the area without throwing an encounter at them. Alternatively, in the same vein, you could make it so when the party wakes up in the morning, they discover footprints all around their campsite, and all their backpacks have been looked through, but nothing has been stolen. In the real world, there are some raccoons who are so smart, they'll actually be able to unzip a backpack, go into it and get the food out, then zip it back up again, so maybe the footprints are raccoon tracks and they've lost some of their food. Nothing really happens from these events, and it's simply there just to make them paranoid for no reason, or to add a bit of depth to their travels. And at number 7, we have the magical flower scenario. The setup for this one is just, while the characters are rocking through a forest, every time the characters take a step, flowers bloom underneath their footprints. And this continues for a few hundred feet. This is just another non-combat scenario, in order to add some more mystery to whatever woods they might be in, and not be unsettling like the previous spot on this list. Unless your party is just very paranoid about any kind of magical event. It's just a fun little thing that happens for a little while in the forest to spruce up, no pun intended, the travel segment of the game. The flowers that appear underneath are not really harmful, so it's basically all additional flavor. Although, be careful not to add too many flavorful scenarios like this back to back. If the mysterious events amount to nothing every time, then it can just become tedious. And at number 6, we have the river crossing. The setup for this one is simply any kind of place where a bridge would usually be, and the bridge just happens to be destroyed or swept away for whatever reason. It could be across a river, it could be over a large crevasse, just as long as the crossing isn't super large, and your characters won't die immediately if they fall into it. The characters can conclude the scenario by finding a way to get across the river, and that's basically it. Trying to get over something like this without having the ability to fly or teleport really requires the players to get creative of what they can do, or really rewards players for taking some niche spells, which would allow you to create a temporary bridge across. Or maybe the players don't want to find a way to get across creatively, and just take the option to walk around, losing a couple of hours of their trip. And at number 5, we have the Forest Fire. The setup for this scenario is a whole bunch of animals just running past the party, and when normally aggressive animals like wolves or bears run past the party without paying them any mind, this should kind of tip off the party that something is going wrong. After whatever kind of checks you might ask for, perhaps nature, survival, or perception, they notice there's a blaze of smoke coming towards them, and then they might have to perform some kind of skill challenge in order to keep ahead of the blaze, as it's making its way pretty quickly towards the party. Chances are the party won't be able to actually put out the fire, so it's up to you to determine how they best run away from it. Where maybe they can end the encounter by just making it to a river and hiding under the water there, or run to a town they just left in order to warn them about what's coming. So, what's unique about the forest fire scenario? 
Well, it is purely a scenario for running away from something, which isn't a creature. Because if you try to create a scenario where players have to run away from something that's a creature, most of the time they'll want to stay and fight it. But there's nothing to actually fight here. And again, it's a way to let your party use non-combat skills to actual effectiveness. And at number four, we have the Trapped End. The setup for this scenario is you come to a tree end that has been trapped by two boulders. And it's up to your party to decide if they wish to free them or not, if they even can. This is an excellent scenario for people with high strength scores, as they can probably do a strength check in order to lift the boulder up a little bit, while everybody else helps pull the tree end out. Although magic could also be used in order to help, as with most of these encounters, it's up to the party to be creative with how they actually figure out how to solve them, as there's many ways you can get rid of the giant boulders. If they do free the giant tree ant, he's thankful enough to give the party some kind of buff. You could be flavorful and say he gives everybody the benefits of the bark skin spell for two hours, and then maybe they have a random encounter afterwards to make use of whatever buff they just received. And at number three, we have the enlarged animals. The setup for this one is you come across a couple of normally small animals that are eating some strange foods. For this example, we'll just use badgers, and these badgers are pecking in the dirt at some glowing seeds. If the party gets close, that's when the seeds take effect, and all of the badgers grow to large size, as if affected by the Enlarge Reduce spell. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that the creatures have to be hostile at this point, but they could be, and it would make for an interesting combat encounter where the party is just fighting large versions of normally small animals, which is a pretty common occurrence in D&D, surprisingly enough. And of course, if the players themselves put together whatever food they were eating, they could also use it to gain the benefits of the Enlarge Reduce spell for a minute but then maybe poison them afterwards if they fail some kind of constitution save. That way they don't have risk-free access to a damage increase. And at number two, we have the Misty Spores. The setup for this one does require a little bit of hand-waving, because normally this scenario comes across as something that should definitely kill the players. As what you do for the setup is have an unexpected mist come into the area that obscures the vision of the party, but it can still be seen through well enough to navigate through the forest. Then they come upon a group of giants that sit motionless around a giant chessboard, with their eyes very intent on the pieces. If for whatever reason the players decide to investigate the giants, they discover there's fungus growing from their eyelids and hair, and the bodies will slump over if touched, as the mist they've walked into is actually spores being released by nearby fungus, and the players should really get out of the area as soon as possible. There's also a lot of fungus plant creatures in the monster manual they can fight, if you want to turn this into a combat encounter, or you could require everybody to perform a constitution save as soon as they find out what's going on, to see if they maybe collapse and everybody else has to carry them, or at the very least to see if they are now suffering from the poison condition. Whatever the case, you're probably not trying to kill the party here, so make sure the spores aren't super deadly, and that it's not too late for them to actually overcome the challenge. And at number one, we have the Looping Forest. The setup for this one is simple. Someone in your party, preferably the one with the highest passive perception score, notices that all of the trees are identical, and also points out a twig that had snapped in the same location one hour prior. The party is stuck in a loop where they constantly cycle back to the same location, no matter which direction they travel in. Now, there are many ways they can escape this loop, but like with most of these scenarios, it's best left to the players to come up with something, and you try your best to see if it works out with what you had in mind. It could be that they triggered some kind of magical trap, which just has a duration they can wait out, and after a couple of hours they'll be able to progress without incident. It could be they need someone to figure out that they've been stuck in a magical trap and that they simply need to cast a spell in order to get rid of it. Maybe the force itself is just magical, and you have to figure out some kind of puzzle in order to progress further. Or maybe if they just fly out, they can escape the looping forest. Or maybe there's no way to escape and they have to teleport out to get free. There are many different things you can do with this kind of scenario, and it's pretty easy to add in a combat encounter, so it's just an excellent staple of the forest encounter you can run into randomly, which allows for a wide range of creative uses and solutions which is why it's at the number one spot on this list. All right, and that's the video. If you have any ideas for other Force Encounters or ideas for videos about different kinds of themed encounters, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments, and who knows? Maybe we'll make a video of your idea next.